we can do the inside of our front and back cover. Actually, first, first I want to make sure these are going to stay. So first I'm going to put some pattern paper on just this little strip right here and here. And then I'm going to put brads through it just to be sure that it is very, very secure. Okay, so once you've got some paper in between your pages, I'm going to take my crocodile and go right, <laughs> it just makes it. Punch a hole right through the cover on both ends. And I'm going an inch in, which is as far as the crocodile will go. And then I've got these really uh, cute little heart brads that I'm going to use. You don't have to use those. You can use whatever you, brads you have in your stash, but I just thought they were cute. And then open the tines. And this is just a little extra security so you know that your pages are in there, locked down, not going anywhere. We're going to do the same thing with this set of pages. And I mean, if you don't have a crocodile, you can you can do this with a pair of really sharp scissors. I have done it before. It's a little bit of a struggle, but um, it is possible. Okay. Awesome, and we're going to put some score tape on the backs of the tines, and then we can work on the front and back covers. Actually, nope, first we are going to put some ribbon for a closure, then we're going to work on the front and back covers. So like I said, the second version of the album is going to have a different kind of closure. This one's just going to be a simple uh, ribbon tie. Alright, so I think I'm going to use this teal ribbon that I have. Um, I'm just going to, this is all I have, so I'm just going to cut it in half. And I probably don't need it all, but I'd rather be too long than too short. So all I'm going to do is measure the center of the album. So four is right here. Just want to make sure the ribbon is at center. And then put a piece of score tape at that center mark. And put the ribbon on. And then do the same on the other side. So I guess honestly it really didn't matter if we did this first or not. I was thinking I was going to put the ribbon on the inside but then decided outside would be better. Okay so now we have got our ribbon closure. Now We want to cover the inside with cardstock. So I've cut uh, two pieces that are five and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths. So perfect to fit over this. So I'm gonna put those on and then we can create the front and back um, elements. No, 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 don't stick to the front. This one, I'm just going to put the back one on while we're at it here.
Fantastic. Okay, so we've got our cover on, we've got our pages, and now we're going to work on the front and the back covers. Alright, so um, what I had for the front cover was this. Uh, it is two of the B pieces, and I've just cut off the side pocket parts and cut one of them down an inch and then one e-piece and a hinge. So this e-piece I scored it at, I believe it was uh, two and... So this piece I scored at two and a half and six and three quarters. So you could do that. I believe the pieces that we said that we had left were one that was a tri-fold and one that was just scored in half. So you can use either one of these or you can score an e-piece at, uh, what did I just say? Two and a, gosh. <laughs> these are these are my I'm gonna I'm gonna let you in on a secret. These are my notes and how much things get changed as <laughs> this is what I'm trying to read right here. <laughs> and this, things get changed continuously as I'm as I'm going. This one hasn't been too bad. Like this one's been um not horrible in the changes, but that one the E pieces, I changed those quite a few times. So your choice. Uh you can score it at two and a half by, and six and three, or right down the middle at five and a half, or do it as a trifold. So your choice completely. All right. Um, so now I am going to get our pieces ready. Since I already have my papers cut um, for the E at that specific dimension, so I'm going to um, score one at two and a half and six and three just so I don't have to cut new papers. Okay, so two C's, an E, and a hinge. So for the C pieces, we are just going to slice off the two sides. So it's not going to be a pocket in this case. So I'm just going to use my paper trimmer to cut off the side bits from both of them. Okay, so now you have two pieces that look like that. And now I'm just going to cut um, an inch off one of them and the other one can stay the way it is. Okay. And then the E piece is going to be adhered this way. So we need a hinge that is four and a quarter. So I'm just going to get my hinges here. Okay, so just cutting a hinge to four and a quarter. Awesome, and now I can add some score tape to that. Amazing, and miter those corners real quick. Oh, I got some interesting shadows happening right here. Alright, so now we're going to be working directly onto our uh, front cover here. Let's get some of this extra stuff out of the way. Alright, so where's my bone folder? So one of the C's, your choice, um, either on the left or the right. I'm centering mine um, from top to bottom, but if you prefer, you could have it towards the top, have it towards the bottom. Completely 
up to you. I wanted this album to have a lot of freedom. That's why there's only five pieces. It's amazing what you can do with just five pieces. Now just make sure that this does not interfere with the fold. Okay, you want to make sure that it is... Oh, mine's a little bit crooked. Um, it's right up to the fold, but not interfering with it. Oh, no, it's down there. <laughs> it's it's not going to move. <laughs> if you do get something that's like you, you've slightly put it on crooked, you can always kind of maneuver it, hold it here, and then take your bone folder and kind of re-crease it. And you can kind of get it a little bit straighter. Yeah, that's a little bit straighter. I like that. Awesome. And then we're going to put our other B piece on the other side attached. So kind of underneath this B piece, right? We're going to, but we want to make sure that they're even. So hold it so it is lined up. There we go, and then we are going to attach the E piece, can you see this, the E piece right on top of the top C, the shorter C, via the hinge. So we're going to put the hinge just on the back at the top. And I mean, if you there's so many options for the ways that you can do this. You can put it at the top of the page if you desire instead, or you can put it um, inside the page. Um, I mean, use your imagination, really. You can kind of do whatever it is you like. Um, I'm going to put it on centered onto the front C, the top C, which means that I want to put my pattern paper on first. And so I had that going there and I had that there. Okay, so I'm just going to put this piece on and then I can put this piece on after, okay? I'm just going to quickly put this one on. And then I'm going to put the E on. All right, now we will probably want to cover up that section right here with some, some of the same paper. Awesome. So I'm going to put um, one magnet going from the flap of the E to the front of the E. Buddy. Hey. Oh, sorry. Hey, monkey. Okay, so one magnet there. Awesome. Um, I'm going to put some kind of... Um, <laughs> you're blocking the way. I'm going to put some kind of swing tab going, I think, from the bottom up over top of the E. Um, I am also going to put one magnet going from the top E to the lower E.
Awesome. Okay, fantastic. So now I can put this piece on. Hi. <laughs> can you look up? <gasps> look at her. Hi, buddy. Mommy's got to work. Mommy's got to work. I do. I, I know. I know you want the love. I know you want the love. I know. Can you just give me like 10 minutes and then we can have a cuddle sesh, okay? <laughs> oh, now you're getting your <laughs> getting cat fur in the paper. Okay, so there's that one. here. I'm going to leave the inside blank actually. And then I've got that there. Okay, so this front part can go on. It's the second time I've done that in this album where I've like glued the corner down accidentally. Okay. That can go there. And this can go... Actually, um, I'm going to put this one down. But I need to find a way to keep this thing from flapping. So I want to put something down here. Got some beautiful butterfly or dragonfly charms here. I'm thinking I might just use one of those. You know what I'm going to do? Because um, these are not magnetic, and I thought they were. But I might, I'm going to put one of those, a nice big dragonfly there. But I think I'm going to put a magnet going from the very back of the E onto this part so it stays closed. I think that's going to be my plan. So a lot of this I'm making up on the fly. <laughs> I wrote most of it down, but I didn't write it all down. So, some of it's happening on the fly. So, bear with me. <laughs> okay, so we've got a magnet there. So, I'm going to put one single magnet on that piece of score tape. And then I'm going to close it, open this up, and let it... Um, find its buddy. Alright, so I know that it, the magnet has to, the adhesive has to be on this side. Oops. Okay, so now that I've got some adhesive on it, I'm going to let it find its buddy again. Awesome! So now, that is magnetized. It's going through a few sheets of paper so it's not as strong but it's still pretty good. And we are going to add one more. So we are going to be putting that there. I mean, you could do a different closure if you like. You don't have to have a magnet there. Okay, now I don't have anything cut yet for here or for here. So I'm just going to quickly 
do that. I can put this one down though. Okay, so get that down. And I'm just going to quickly cut some paper for those couple spaces and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got my pattern paper. <clears throat> I've got my pattern paper on the back here. I've got a little ribbon pull there, <clears throat> there, <laughs> and I have got just this piece left to go. So I want to put a little dragonfly on the front of this. Um, so that's why I haven't put this piece on as of yet. Uh, so I'm just going to poke a little hole. Um, I want it to be. Don't want to interfere with the magnet. Might put it higher. Hmm. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna put it right below the magnet. Where does that take it? Right there. Okay, well that's all right. All right. Big enough. All right, fabulous. I'm going to put some score tape over that and then put that last piece and then we can do the back cover. Awesome. So there is the front cover. Now we'll flip it over here and we will do the back cover. So the back cover has um, one A and one E. So our last A, which is this, and then the E was in a trifold. I'll just quickly show you what it looks like. So the, this is here, I'm just going to move this over for a second. So this is the E piece, and I've got it attached to, remember those cutoffs that we did earlier? These two that I'm like, save them and we can use them as a belly band or something. So I've got the E piece attached to one of those as a belly band. And then this is, these two triangles are actually the A piece. I just cut it, um, cut that corner off and cut that corner off to make two kind of triangle pockets and then a tag that goes through that belly band and into the two A triangle pockets. All right, so that is that. So let's get our pieces ready. Okay, so we've got our E trifold already ready. We've got our small belly band, which we are just going to trim the miter, these other two corners. And that should be the right size. Okay, awesome. And now you can do this with your paper trimmer or your um, just with scissors, whichever way you prefer. Um, it might be easier to do this way. So I'm just going to kind of bend this uh, corner up so that the edge of the paper meets this edge of the paper. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. They will overlap just a little bit, but that's okay. Okay, so see what I got there? Now you kind of have your guidelines for where to cut. Um, so let's just 
You can trim it or just use your scissors. I'm just going to use my scissors. Although, I'm immediately regretting that decision and wish that I'd use my trimmer because that's really crooked. <laughs> Alright, so you should have something left that looks like that. We can use that as scrap for something else. And now we're going to fold these back. And trim off these excess bits sticking up. Get this out of the way. Okay, same on this one. Oh goodness, Katya. Okay, so those are going to go there. And then this one is going to go here. So one of them will kind of um, go into the other one just a little bit. So they're going to kind of overlap slightly at the corner. All right, so I'm going to put those on now. Before you put these on, actually, it might be easiest to cut your pattern paper out now. So um, before you've taken off the score tape, if you put this down on your pattern paper and just kind of trace it, and that's probably the easiest way to get your patterned paper perfect. Uh, mine are a smidge too large, so I'm going to trim mine off a little bit. Okay, so that is that. Um, now your the belly band is um, a little bit narrower than the width of the back cover. Um, I like it that way. I don't want the belly band going all the way to the edges, but it, you can recut a piece if you so desire. But there is going to be a little smidge of um, space on either side, so you can put your um, whatever paper you're using down first and then put the belly bands. So there is that smidge on either side showing. I think actually that's what I'm going to do. But um, this is really bright. I want to tone it down a little. I'm just going to kind of just roughly just kind of mute it a little with some some ink that was a little bit a little bit too much. Want it to look vintagey and stained like the rest of it, right? Okay, fabulous. So now we can put that down. Slide it into the pockets. <laughs> this one's going to be tricky, so try not to let it adhere before you want it to. You might have to kind of put your fingers in the pockets a little bit. There we go. Alright, so now I'm going to put the belly band on, kind of put it wherever, 
however high you want it to go. Remember this um, is going to sit on top and it can go vertically like that and open to the sides or you can put it on horizontally like that and have it open up and down. Completely your choice. So I'm going to put that belly band down first. I'm going to put it right about there. All right, and I think I think I want mine going up and down, but I think I'm going to put it a little bit further. I'm going to line it up with the top and that way the tag, what did I do with that tag? So the tag, the perfect size measures five and a quarter by seven and a half. So I'm going to put something at the top of this tag so you know that it comes out. And so then this is going to sit right there. But I want there to be, uh, it, to be really easy to pull that tag out. So I'm going to have my E piece be a little bit down. It's hard to see the black on black on black. I'm sorry. All right, so I'm just going to put some score tape then on just the top part of my E piece. So just put it wherever it is that you're adhering. You can also put the score tape onto the belly band itself. Totally up to you. Actually, I might want to put, no, I'm going to just do little tiny um, strips of paper on the sides of the belly band, I think, instead of wasting it. Okay, so now that goes up and down. Um, I am going to put one magnet holding the E piece closed. Um, but I'm going to do one of those where it's on the um, one magnet on the front. Where are you? There's so many things sticking to my magnets right now. Um, so one on the front and then... Oh my goodness, come here. And then let it find its buddy. Right, so then I just have to decorate this part and this part. And I'm going to leave the inside open. All right, so I am going to uh, get some of my pattern paper on. And then I will come back and uh, we will finish things up. Okay, so I've got my papers on here now. And I've got... Uh, the unicorn for on the tag. Oh, I totally forgot about the little, the little biddies right here. Let's get a scrap. Oh, I kind of wanted something so you knew that that pulled out. I almost want to make, maybe I'll make another one of these little charms and then you can see that happening. Okay, so I just want to make one of these little guys to go on this part and to go on the tag. So I'm just going to quickly show you that. So I've got a couple head pins, so it's just like a ball at the end of a little pin. And then I've got some beads. Uh, these are uh, 
the clear ones are like a really pale fluorite and then I'm, I'm honestly not sure what those two are <laughs> I can't remember uh, these ones are um, uh, a dyed amazonite okay and then I've got a tiny bit of chain okay so I'm just going to thread on the the beads and then I'm going to bend over the wire into an L shape take some round nose pliers and just maneuver the wire into a uh, like a, almost a circle okay like that so it's still open now we're gonna put just a little bit of cut a tiny bit of uh, chain or chain that's the word I'm like is that the word yes that's the word and we're gonna thread the chain onto that wire and then we're going to hold put the round nose pliers back into the hole and then use another set of pliers to kind of pull that little tip all the way around so we're just pulling that piece of wire all the way around okay so I just wrapped it around that loop I hope you can see that my camera is not focusing very well okay so that's all there is to it for that so we're gonna put those on um, with a um, brad okay but I also want to show you um, the end of our ribbon I mean you can just leave them like this but um, I would like to do something a little bit fancier with them so I'm going to close it up just so I know how much ribbon I want if I have to trim these at all Actually, no, they're pretty good just the way they are. Okay, perfect. So, what I'm going to use is made these little braided um, silver kind of charms. It's really simple, just braiding wire and then doing a little swirl at the top. If you'd like me to show you how I did those, um, please let me know in the comments below. Also, the one on the first page. If anyone would like to see how this one was done, please let me know and I'll do another video on it. But for now, I'm going to take these little clamps. So they've got um, kind of like rigid teeth on them. So we're going to put them onto our end of our ribbon. I like to fold the ribbon actually to give it a little bit more to grab onto. And then we're just going to take a set of pliers. I like uh, the flat nose pliers for this. And then just squeeze, hold it straight, and squeeze the end to clamp it shut. And then do it on the other side. Um, these particular ones are slightly too big for this ribbon. They're made for a little bit bigger ribbon, but that's okay. And we're going to do the same on the other side, and then we're just going to use um, a couple jump rings to attach these onto the ends. You have to press quite firmly to make sure that they are really on there. my jump rings so 
So I'm just putting the jump ring through the ring on our little charm and then through the hook here and closing it up. And there we've got a nice little end piece now to the ribbon instead of it just being plain ribbon. it up. I'm just going to quickly put these on. Ow, I just stabbed myself. Just stabbed myself. Don't do that. silver threads. The brad through the link, the end link. And then putting it through our hole and then I'm not going to put pattern paper on the back. I'm just going to cover the tines with like a sticker or something of that nature. I've got a tiny little butterfly that I'm going to put over those tines. Perfect. And then and I'm also going to put one here. Where'd my other brad go? There it is. Okay, so the brad through and through this. And I'll put another little sticker onto the back side of this. Got another little butterfly. Awesome. Okay, so the album is pretty much done. I've got some paper on the back and on the spine, but on the front I want to do um, a mixed media with um, some rice paper that I got from Stamperia. So I've got two different uh, rice papers. Originally I was thinking about doing the unicorn on the front, but now oh, I'm so torn because I really love this one as well. So I'm not quite sure if I should go with the unicorn or with this one here, or maybe a little bit of both. I might do both. I don't know. <laughs> I kind of did the paper on the cover going thinking that I was going to use this one so maybe I might keep with that one and then I'll use this for a whole separate um, project. Yeah, okay. Alright, so I'm going to get some supplies together and I'm going to move this out of the way because I'm going to actually do the mixed media on a um, piece of chipboard and then put it onto the uh, front cover itself instead of working directly on the cover.